So in the previous video, we talked about the four ways of solving quadratic equations. We looked at solving by factoring and solving by using the square root property. In this video, we're going to look at completing the square. Now remember, any time that we're solving a quadratic equation, we're finding the x-intercepts of the graph of the function. So when we complete the square, and this is something that is definitely not um, for, every, um, for every quadratic equation, um, only the quadratic formula works every single time. Completing the square will work every single time, but sometimes it's not the best option. So when is it the best option? Well, it's the best option if there is a 1 as the leading coefficient. The linear term or the middle term here is an even number. And we also want our quadratic equation to be not factorable. So that's the best time to complete the square. So this x squared minus 6x plus 4 equals 0 is a very good candidate for completing the square. So let's get started here. So x squared minus 6x plus 4. So in order to complete the square, the first thing we need to do is take the constant term and move it from the left to the right. So this will be x squared minus 6x plus a blank equals negative 4, because the 4 that was positive on the left on the right will be negative, and plus that same blank. Now, I'm leaving blanks here because we are going to be completing a perfect square trinomial. And also remember that this is an equation. So whatever we do on the left, we have to do on the right so that the equation will stay balanced. We need our equation to stay balanced. So how do we fill in these blanks? Well, we go to our middle term, our linear term. So our linear coefficient is negative 6. We take negative 6 and we divide it by 2. So negative 6 divided by 2 is going to be negative 3, and we will square that number. So negative 3 squared is 9, and that is what we add to both sides. x squared minus 6x plus 9 equals negative 4 plus 9. Note that we have kept our equation balanced by adding 9 to both sides. Now, what this allows us to do, it allows us to now factor what remains. So, let's take a look, and I will come right over here, and I'm going to take the x squared minus 6x plus 9, just rewrite it here, and combine the like terms on the right-hand side. Negative 4 plus 9 is equal to 5. And we have created a perfect square trinomial that can now easily be factored. So factors of 9 that add up to negative 6 are x minus 3 times x minus 3 or x minus 3 squared equals 5. So this was a perfect square trinomial. Its factors are x minus 3 times x minus 3. So now we can refer back to what we looked at in the last video, the square root property. Because we have an isolated squared term, I can now take the square root of both sides. The square root is going to undo the square, leaving us with x minus 3 equals the square root of 5, which is plus or minus the square root of 5. To solve for x, we just need to move 3 to the other side. It's negative on the left. On the right, it will be positive. So our solutions are positive 3 plus or minus the square root of 5. So those are two distinct roots. Let's do it one more time. So here we have 
negative 2x squared minus 16x plus 10. So if we look back at our previous problem, do we have a 1 up front? No. But do we have a greatest common factor that can easily come out? Yes. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take that negative 2 that's up front and I'm going to divide it away. We can always get rid of an integral factor and that's what we're doing here. The integral factor that we are dividing away is negative 2. So when I divide everything through by negative 2, I get x squared negative 16 divided by negative 2 is a positive 8. 10 divided by negative 2 is negative 5. And now I have a good candidate for completing the square. So we're going to go through the process again. So first thing, take the constant, move it from the left to the right, and leave a blank. So x squared plus 8x plus a blank equals 5 plus that same blank. Next, we will complete the square. Go to the middle term, take the middle term, which is 8, divide it by 2, and then square. So 8 over 2 is 4, and 4 squared is 16. We are going to add 16 to both sides, which creates a perfect square trinomial that is now easily factored. Factors of positive 16 that add up to positive 8 are a positive 4 and a positive 4. So x plus 4 quantity squared equals 5 plus 16, which is 21. So once again, our squared expression is isolated on the left-hand side of the equation. Now we can undo the square and solve for x by taking the square root of both sides. So the square root undoes the square. That's x plus 4. The square root of 21 will not simplify, so we'll leave it plus or minus the square root of 21. From there, we need to move the 4 from the left to the right. x equals negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 21. Those are our two solutions for negative 2x squared minus 16x plus 10 equals 0. Solving by completing the square.